Okay, all you punkers, waivers, creeps, and thugs. Get down, turn on, tune in, and shut the fuck up. You must be honest with where your relation. I then I went to Paris, and well, I mean, I have a lover and everything. Now there are three things that you can. I am right now. I mean, I'm medium, just medium, but I made all the right sort of brown and video because I mean. But all to yourself, you or try to your feelings. feelings. You know, I'm just sort of creating. I, I really don't even know what I'm doing sometimes. <laughs> Sort of exciting. It gives me the chance to experience oh, all of the dirty socks and, socks and underwear and shirts and pants and, 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 and everything. I built and then it's an intensive art form. I destroy. Some, sometimes I am an artist. Commitment Put it back in and, and it looked as if the room is clean. Now, 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 the problem is not being Irish. The socks were standing up on the back of the bed. There was a terrible smell. Yeah, I guess. Good. Tell me about the first time you had sex. <laughs> what? Tell me about your first screw. Well, um, I was 16. Uh, yeah, 16. And I'd been going out with was this girl for a fuck? while. Well, I'd been, I'd had this girl then for I a said, while. I said, was it a good fuck? Well, yeah. So it was a good fuck? Yeah. What did she look like? Um, well, her name was... No, no, I, no, what did she look like? Did she look like me? Yeah, kind of. Bullshit, you liar. Well, she wasn't, I mean, she wasn't as tall as she you. She didn't look like me. Well, not really, but I mean, she... Were you hard? <sighs> come on, were you hard? <laughs> well, did yeah. Did you come? Yeah. Did she come? Did she come? Are you hard now? Do you want to fuck me? Uh, Come on, do you want to fuck me? Hands up, who wants to die? Shut up, Nick! <laughs> Back in black! Back in black!
Yeah. Welcome to 1987. Let's face it, New York City death rock is out. French culture is dead. Postmodernism, who cares? Now what? A film about Elvis Presley? have to put up with more of this insufferable meat, feedback, and noise. You fucking... Here they come back! Yeah. Who comes? Yahoo! You sing my song, then do hurt and gone. Then hence it and twist, the two men get back! to him by a writer friend of mine. Uh, I shook hands with him. His handshake was amazingly weak, and his hands were covered with perspiration and sweat. He stayed for about 10 minutes, and then his bodyguards took him back in a limo to his hotel, I assume. Elvis was America's greatest creation. He was pure Americana, a sort of distillation of Hollywood, showbiz, promo um, promoterism, rock music, and capitalism in the Horatio Alger, Church of Diamonds mold. I think there are a number of similarities between the Elvis phenomenon in the early 1970s and the punk or hardcore phenomenon today. Particularly if you think of the nihilism and ecstatic self-destruction that both seem to partake of. Elvis is in many respects very like Sid Vicious, and I think that his death from a drug over overdose was echoed by Sid Vicious's death from a heroin overdose a couple of years later. The University of Utah Center for Human Toxicology was one of several labs. The other two were located in Houston and Dallas. It was one of the labs that analyzed Elvis's organ tissue for great traces of drugs several days after his death. They found almost a dozen different drugs in his body, stimulants, depressants, painkillers. Of course, this information was quickly suppressed. America couldn't stand to see its premier entertainer and rock star reduced to a common street country. Here is a man that had it in the palm of his hand and started off with it that way, and the drug took it away from him. What drugs are we talking about? We're talking about uppers and downers. We're talking about sleeping pills. We're talking about things like Demerol. We're you, talking, yes. You actually saw him? Yes. If you loved him so much, why couldn't you protect him? Well, of course, protect him. How do you protect a man from yourself? Sick rag. And that was when I first heard the blues. 
the school was a lot different than the music we were singing in church. I realized then that music, the blues, gospel, or whatever, is all about letting out what you're feeling inside. Everything seemed to change for me that day I sang in front of my class. And after that, I could always count on my music to help me make friends. They sent Elvis to Germany to cool off. Instead, he found himself hot on the heels of love. Yeah, 14 year old Priscilla, lit. Five foot two, 100 pounds, and a virgin. I met Elvis about six weeks before his tour duty was completed. A friend of mine who knew him asked me if I wanted to meet him. What girl wouldn't? Elvis's relationship with Priscilla was quite unusual. Um, when they met, he was in his mid-twenties and she was about 14. For the first years of their relationship, he seemed to play the role of father or perhaps older brother to her. Um, and yet there was a part of him which played the role of her son in some sense, um, in which, in fact, the relationship was coded as a parent-child relationship with, with Elvis as Oedipus. Um, and if not as Oedipus, then as Peter Rath, or violator of the incest taboo. Um, with Priscilla, Elvis was sucking his sister in many senses, or alternatively, his mother, or a little girl. Fucking mommy! Fucking mommy! When I was 16, Elvis thought it would be great if I came to live at Graceland. He called my parents and assured them that I'd attend a good private school, as well as study modeling and ballet. Those were wonderful times we spent together. 
But most of the year, Elvis was away making movies, and it would get awfully lonely in Memphis without him. I don't need this shit. My reign spanned three decades. And you loved me. You ate it up. You made me your Jesus. And I still had any fucking little shit. And then I'd scream, Mommy! Mommy, give me my medication! I want more money! You understand, Graceland. You have to understand the opulence and decadence of Imperial Rome transferred to a 15-acre southern homestead. Graceland was a kind of womb to Elvis, in its garishness, its mirrors. Viva Rome, motherfucker! I think Elvis Presley has a nice dial and things okay, but when he gets on the stage, he starts to uh, drive those girls nuts by shaking and jumping and laying all over the stage, you know what I mean? Right. And do you think that's bad? Well, it's kind of crazy. Well, Elvis liked to shock you. It was a kind of game with him. Once he had a white string tied around his fingers, he said it came from a tampon. And he kept making jokes about a string swinging from a tampon. He also had a little mechanical dog operated by remote control. He'd run that little dog around where girls were standing and then bring it back to him, pretending it was telling him what it had seen by looking up skirts. No, the dog is him. I mean, on how you look at it, I guess if you want to think it's nasty and sexy, it's good, but to me it's just... I well, mean, the two things are not necessarily Yeah, right? well, you know, it's just so limber and loose. I mean, it's really marvelous. Well, he just feels the rhythm. He digs it the most. You don't see anything wrong with it. No. Elvis's favorite meal, three helpings of mashed potatoes, one pound of bacon, and a he-man serving of green peas. A trucker's portion of sauerkraut, two stacks of sliced tomatoes. Mm-mm. Dog shit. Fit for a king. Elvis Presley sits in his bed. Dear Elvis, I love you. I love your music. I love you so much. <laughs> I think about you every night before I go to bed. I listen to your song on the radio in the dark. Oh, Elvis. Kick your ass in, you motherfucker! I'll never forget my first date with Elvis. He picked me up at my house in his limo, and we drove to the Memphis airport. Once 
where we got into his jet star plane and flew straight to Las Vegas. On the way to Vegas, he presented me with a diamond encrusted gold bracelet with Elvis engraved on it. We landed and a limo took us to the Vegas Hilton. Well, I guess Elvis was really tired. He fell asleep with his head on my lap. He was such a gentleman. He didn't try any of that funny stuff with me. I'll never forget that first day with Elvis. August 14th to August 15th, 1977, Memphis, Tennessee. 10 p.m. Elvis visits his dentist, Dr. Hoffman, who sold his upper right first bicuspid and upper left molar. 11 p.m. Accompanied by Ginger Alden, Charlie Hodge, and Billy Smith, Elvis drives his Stutz Blackhawk through East Memphis. 12.30 a.m. Graceland. Elvis talks to his tour personnel about his upcoming East Coast tour. 2.30 a.m. Elvis calls his head nurse, Tish Henley, and tells her that Ginger is suffering from menstrual pain and will be needing some medication. 4 a.m. Elvis telephones Billy Smith, who arrives at Graceline with his wife, Joe, to play racquetball. Elvis and Billy play racquetball, but stop after Elvis bruises his chin. 6.30 a.m. Billy Smith and his wife, Joe, leave Graceland. Elvis retires to his bedroom and calls for his sleeping medication. 8 a.m. Elvis calls for more medications and ingests eight pills, including Quaaludes, Secanol, Duanol, Amatol, Valium, and Demerol. 8.30 a.m. Elvis calls for more medication and receives two Valmid pills and some Placidol. 9 a.m. Elvis selects from his library a book about the Shroud of Turin and goes to his bathroom to read. 2.15 p.m. Ginger finds Elvis unconscious on the bathroom floor in a fetal position. 2.33 p.m. Unit 6 of the Memphis Fire Department Emergency Division gets an emergency call. Charles Crosby and Ulysses James, paramedics, arrive at 3764 Elvis Presley Boulevard at 2.40 p.m. Elvis is given oxygen, mechanical respiration, and stimulants, but is declared dead on arrival at 2.55 p.m. after the ambulance reaches Baptist Memorial Hospital.
I stole this mirror from Graceland. It was Elvis's. He actually touched it. Every night I make love to it, and in a way, I'm fucking Elvis. Maybe someday we'll have a child, me and Elvis. I pray to Elvis when he listens. He sometimes talks to me because I'm special. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I want to be alone with Elvis. He was the greatest. The bravest. The mightiest entertainer. He made the American dream his reality and taught Germany how to love again. Rest in peace, dear Elvis. Rest in peace. We love you still, and always will. Okay, that's it. The show is over. Go home. You cannot see anymore, and you will not see anymore. So just get out of here. You really bother me.
looking for a ride. A ride, you know? What's up? I just want to see your tits. What's going on, you guys? Now, what the fuck? What Come on, I just, I you? just want to get a ride. I got some drugs. I got, I got that joy. That shit. What's going on? What's your guys seeing anyway? What is that? Here, take some. Come on, you pussy. You afraid of a little paint? No. Nothing like riding a motorcycle. Feel that raw power between your legs. A chrome and metal beast for all to admire. And once you get going, there's nothing at all that'll stop you. You smile as your monster machine bucks and strongly pumps towards its final destination. is my town. I don't like those dirty girl bikers. They will pay the price. I'll squash them so hard, they'll be sorry they were even born. They are dead meat. The neon lights. The glamour. The big city, black leather, switchblades, tattoo love. Only 17 and she's already got one foot in the grave. My baby's almost a real woman now, a real biker. Oh wow, man, wow. Bike. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Shit, bike. Hey, 
in my town. For that unpardonable offense, I will be forced to incarcerate you for 13 years and make you my pleasure slave. Who the fuck does she think she is? I don't know. I am Cruella, mm. and this is my town. I will stand for no subordination. Oh, oh I will show you. That's Dennis Hopper's illegitimate daughter. So nice of her to agree to be in our little movie. Mr. Hopper's spirit lives in her panties, which probably explains why she's so damn mean. Talk about acid flashbacks, huh? like me. I've been here for 20 years. 20 years I've been here. Because Cruella will never let us out of here. <laughs> Cruella, though, does have one weakness. You know what it's for? It's for oh, juicy, long, squeezable sausages. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. my wonderful sausage, the love of my life. Yuck! If there's anything that makes me furious, it's being given bad meat. And this sausage is bad meat. And those bikers are bad meat. And they'll soon be dead meat. <laughs>
Biker Pledge. I pledge allegiance to my dick of the Righteous Brotherhood of Bikers and to Harley Davidson, which makes me come one chrome muffler up my ass, indivisible with whiskey and quaaludes for all. Tavern has a really fine supply. Never 
the same bartender, but always the same bottle. We're broken-hearted losers.